Right, long before the days of these uh, computers and these kind of projectors, there were projectors of this size. These are projectors that use three cathode ray tubes. They've got red, blue and green CRTs. Uh, really bulky thing, took in video inputs, uh, analog video. Uh, this one doesn't appear to be working and there's lots of missing, so it's spare parts. Uh, and there's a lot of good spare parts on this, so let's have a look at what's inside. So at the moment there's two big boards here plus a set of boards down there and we have high voltage here from a, a flyby or line output transformer. Uh, this drives the three tubes so this should be interesting and this looks like amplifiers, for, like sound amplifiers, but I think they're actually drivers for the scanning of deflection coils uh, because there's another amplifier here. Uh, anyway, it's quite interesting. Okay, we're going to try this on. I don't think we'll get anywhere. This is obviously a 110 volt input. I've got a Variac. We'll give it some power and see what happens. Uh, I can hear a switch mode power supply making a noise. But I can't see, and it should be about the right voltage actually. Hmm, okay. Something's trying to work, but we're at about the right voltage. Good percent, yep. But no, no remote control or any other way of operating this, so I think we're kind of stuffed. And this is on the other side of it, there's a, an access panel here. If you take this out, this comes down, and this is what looks like a convergence panel with. Uh, Quite a lot of variations here, and uh, there's also focus controls for each of the tubes. These are the three tube electron guns with the yoke deflection coils there, and large heat sinks here, uh, and the, the actual focusing lenses on top. So lots of really exciting parts in this. Uh, there's also the splitter for the high voltage that goes through each of the tubes uh, running along here as well. Taking it apart a good deal more. Uh, this is. Uh, Obviously the remote control sensor, I've got an infrared sensor here. I don't have the remote, so not much I can do with that, except maybe use that something for something. The boards are now being freed up. There's a, a clamp here. Once that's out, these can are allowed to slide. Uh, and we can see the three cathode ray tube heat sinks uh, here as well. Okay, this board's now free to come out. So that's the the video input, I see it's sort of tuners and an amplifier probably for the speaker output here, video video inputs. It's a little bit in here, this is uh, where the high voltage comes in for the tubes and it's split onto three. This fortunately has a way of being detached, otherwise it would be tricky to get the board out of the for the for the, the main board on the other side out. This bit's quite interesting, this is what I just disconnected so our high voltage from the line output transformer or flyback goes in here and these are the three uh, anode connections to the tubes. On this side uh, we have the focus so there's this is potted. Uh, what else have we got here? There's some other connections. We'll check where they go. And uh, there's obviously resistor dividers in here. So again, the, all the high voltage connections pull out quite nicely with the high voltage sockets from the unit, which is quite nice. And there's earth connections and the two that go back to the power supply, not quite sure why. But that kind of frees up that unit. Sometimes the, the, these uh, flybacks or line outputs for this kind of uh, projector monitor sometimes generate 40 kV at the output, so it's a, a highly stressed part of the unit. So I don't know what condition it's in. Uh, it's inputs for part of the deflection. Yeah, but some interesting stuff here too. Right, I think I've disconnected everything that allows me to remove this CRT and according to the connections that I've removed, this is the, the blue guns tube. So if we take that out, it's free. 
We can have a look at the means disassembly. So we've got um, CRT part and the lens assembly. This heat sink also has a, a liquid in here to aid the cooling or to get the heat off the phosphor off the screen. Uh, this is this gun has a electrostatic focusing and uh, electromagnetic deflection here. Right. And this is the large uh, anode connection coming in here, the high voltage. Okay, now the center CRT is freed up. This one to move it. And that's cables. This is the uh, green uh, CRT. Uh, again, slightly longer HT lead. And in fact, there's a little expansion unit here to allow the fluid for cooling to expand, which I uh, tried to take apart, and some of the liquid ran out, as you can see there. So this will need further dismantling. This board with large heat sinks, this is amplifiers for, uh, it looks like part of the beam convergence. Uh, it could also be part of the scanning, you need to look at this a bit more, but these look like quite nice amplifiers for driving each of the three. They're actually marked uh, uh, red, green and blue connections for the CRT for the coils. Nice heat sink on it too. And on the uh, the back boards with the so tube sockets are all daisy changed, uh, focus inputs here. Um, so yeah, quite a lot of good stuff here. You probably see a lot more of these CRTs in various experiments. Well, if we look at this uh, CRT, this one I think is the green one. And I've loosened the plates that hold it onto the heatsink. The uh, deflection yolks are free to move. And they're quite straightforward and okay you can free it up now so you can see there's some coolant here running out uh, this is the liquid between the uh, face plate and the uh, lens assembly there's a, a band around here which looks to me like lead so I think there's obviously quite a, a reasonable amount of x-rays because of the impact you can also see this is a fair amount of screen burn on the front of the, the phosphor on the tube that's certainly a nice little tube. This is the uh, lens assembly, and if I take this cover up, this is the little expansion bladder for the uh, the coolant that sits inside this reservoir here. This is the green CRT removed for closer inspection, and you can see the anode connection and. Uh, this one, as you can see, the burn on the phosphor and a little bit extra burn I've managed to do uh, with the beam current being slightly higher, a stationary spot on phosphor burns pretty quickly. Uh, there's also the glass is loaded with some sort of heavy metal. You can see the coating should be silver, but there's something colouring it there. So that's presumably a part of the X ray shield, so it could be lead or another heavy metal, perhaps barium. This would be one of the last of this type of CRT before the the um, LCD projectors went digital. Uh, there were earlier examples, and you can see the CRT is much more massive in this early example. This one doesn't have electrostatic focusing; it relies on on magnets to do the focusing in the gun as well.